Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary Davis. I'm on the faculty of the music department here at CWRU and will be chair of the department starting in January. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon's uh, continuing celebration of the 40th anniversary of the joint music program. This program that we're so proud of that we started with the Cleveland Institute of Music back in 1968. So this is the first ever real celebration of this extraordinary collaboration. Um, and we thought it would be appropriate to mark it with a day-long festival of performances. So I hope that all of you have gotten a copy, not only of the program for what's happening here in Harkness Chapel today, but a yellow sheet that's out on the table that shows exactly what's going on on the four venues that we're running this afternoon, uh, two of them over at CIM. And uh, at 2 o'clock this afternoon, um, we'll also be having concerts in one of the galleries at the Art Museum. So I encourage you to ramble around and hear a sampling of the incredibly diverse musical offerings um, that we have on tap for you today. Those of you who were here uh, at noon when things started here in Harkness Chapel uh, had a little taste of some of the early music that goes on in the joint program our Baroque Orchestra performed. Now we're gonna shift gears significantly and go to German Romanticism with a little bit of Mahler, Strauss, and Brahms. And it's my pleasure to welcome back one of uh, our most illustrious program graduates, Kirsten Fleischmann, who has come to us from San Francisco uh, to be here today. And she'll be singing uh, with the help of accompanist Jenny Heemstra, who is on the staff here at the Case Music Department. So please join me in welcoming Kirsten and Jenny. Struggling as I do to 
maintain this passion for music, this beloved avocation, against the demands of career and family. Another colleague of mine who professes no special performing talent, nonetheless possesses an encyclopedic knowledge of classical music and its history, and I learned of something from every conversation. The connection with some of my patients is equally strong. When I mourned the loss of Lorraine Hunt Lieberson's powerful voice and presence with a patient recently, she not only commiserated, but thoughtfully brought me a copy of the New Yorker's eloquent eulogy to Lieberson to her next visit. Others have appeared in my concerts, sometimes unintentionally, but more often to cheer on their singing doctor. Whether we're discussing jazz saxophone, hopes for a nascent rock band, or the tranquility of an unaccompanied cello suite, music forms invisible bonds between people. It is a language that largely transcends cultural and linguistic barriers, allowing for a fuller and more three-dimensional relationship with patients and with colleagues. It is said that the brains of musicians are different than those of others in auditory, motor, visual, spatial areas, and that they have a larger corpus callosum. As a cardiologist, I have no first-hand knowledge in this area, but I do know that my life has been different and infinitely richer because of music. Like many others, I play multiple roles in life. I like to think I'm a little better at all of them than I would other ones because musician. And now to some music. The first set is three songs by Gustav Mahler with texts from a collection of folk poetry known as Des Knaben Wunderbar. This is Mahler at his light-hearted best. For example, the first song, Wer hat dies Liedlein gedacht? Literally translated means, who thought up this little song? <laughs> and the second, Lob des Hohen Verstands, describes a singing contest between the cuckoo and the nightingale. The judge? Why, the donkey, of course. With his ears, he must be a good judge. As an aside, it is one of the few times in a singing career where one is asked to bray. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure you'll notice when that happens. And lastly, Reinlinget, a favorite of mine that describes an old Rhine legend and a golden ring. Finally, I'd like to dedicate my performance here today to all my teachers here at Case, but particularly to Mrs. Gretchen Garnett, who certainly taught a 17-year-old how to sing, but also taught her a great deal about facing life head-on with grit, positivity, and grace. Three songs by the stuff <laughs> Thank you. 
Strauss's beautiful Zueignung. And then, in Brahms' vergebliches Ständchen, we meet a young man and a young woman, trading verses as he stands below her window one night, asking to be let in. She, being well versed by her mother on this issue, turns him down flat. He then delivers a thinly veiled threat. The night and the wind are so cold that his love just might freeze. <laughs> but all to no avail, she sends him home and bids him good night. Finally, we have von Ewiger Liebe. It's the story of two lovers walking home on a dark night, of the young man's protestations that if she should be suffering shame or torment because of their love, that they can be parted as quickly as their love brought them together, and of her unshakable faith that stronger than iron, stronger than steel, their love must prevail. Songs by Strauss and Franz. <laughs>